Hello, my favorite River West fourth and fifth graders. It's John again. And uh, I, now that the smoke is cleared for September with all those fires and stuff that's kind of cleared out, it's gone, which is great. And for you, maybe it, it's it, you're feeling like the fog has started to lift with the start of school and all that kind of stuff, figuring out whether you're doing online school or in-person or some sort of hybrid, whatever that looks like for you. Um, we're excited that it's October, okay? And and so we in September, we talked about the armor of God. Now we're moving into this new topic, and that topic is community. And I'm so excited to talk about this. It's one of my favorite things because I love people. I am driven by relationships. I love being with people. And that's kind of what we want to talk about. God made us to be relational. He created us this way. We're hardwired that way. And so we're going to talk about some of those things and what the Bible says about it and how that plays out because this is so huge, you guys. Community is a huge, huge, huge theme in Scripture. And I'm going to show you a few places this morning or today, but also um, talk about why that is. And, and there's there's two incredible truths that I want to, to point out to you guys before we jump in. And the first one is, is, again, that we're hardwired. We were made for relationships, that we were created to do life in relationship with other people. And then when we get away from that, life feels funky. It doesn't work the way that we were, we were created for. And then the other big truth in there is that God himself invites us into community with him to do life with him, which is, which is amazing. So, but we're going to turn to a couple places in scripture and um, we're, we're going to take a look at this. And so good place to start. We're going to go to the beginning. Okay. We'll go to the beginning of the Bible. We're going to go to Genesis. And in Genesis, you guys know the story. God is speaking into existence. Every Everything that is, everything that we see, everything that we, everything that we touch and feel, and all that kind of stuff. And he starts with light and dark and water and, and animals and plants and all those kinds of things. And then he gets to creating us. And if you guys remember, this is this is pretty incredible. And the language of this is so profound. Uh, it says that that God said, "Let us make man in our own image." Why does God refer to himself as as us and our? And this is one of those mysteries, you guys, about the Christian faith that is beautiful, and we could spend hours there. We're not going to today, but it's this idea that we believe that God exists as a triune God, that he exists as a community, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he's totally self-sufficient, as is, but God wants and desires community, and he invites us into that. You guys, that is such a profound mystery. And again, we could spend hours there, but we're not going to. Instead, we're going to keep moving forward in a couple other stories. One of my favorite stories in the whole Bible And it's a story about Moses. Maybe you've heard of Moses. He's kind of a big deal in the Old Testament. And Moses is known for being a great leader, right? He was a great leader, and he did some incredible things. He helped lead uh, the Israelite people out of slavery and all that. And and, but here's what you got to remember about Moses, you guys. We don't talk about this a lot. Moses was not a perfect person. He was not. He was super self-conscious. He he felt like he wasn't a very good speaker. Like he had trouble communicating and that kind of thing. He was self-conscious. No leader is perfect. No person is perfect. Perfect. And so you got to remember that when you remember who Moses is. But he was a great leader, and God used him in profound ways. And in this story, there's a battle going on, okay? And the, the Israelite army, being led by Joshua, is fighting against the Amalekites. And they're battling, and up above on a rock is Moses. And Moses has his staff that, that God has given him, kind of, kind of uh, represents the power of God. And he's holding his arms up, holding the staff up. And as long as he keeps his hands up, his arms up, the Israelites are winning in the battle. If he lets his arms down, they start losing. And, and I love this picture because the, the power is from God, right? It's not the strength of the army or anything like that. But, and, and Moses is calling attention to that. But then there's something incredible with this that he is holding his arms up. And it's only when his arms are up that they're, they're winning. And I'll never forget, when I was in high school, I was sitting in the front row at my church. And my younger brother, who was in middle school at that point in time, the pastor, Kent, is telling this story. It's the first time I'd ever heard it. And he's telling the story, and he invites my brother up on stage in front of the entire church. And he has my brother stand behind him and hold his arms up. And he says, okay, this is Moses. And he starts telling the story. But he's really going slow at the story. And I'm kind of getting mad because he's embellishing. He's talking about, hey, maybe there's little animals scurrying around on the, on the ground. And maybe the Israelites were wearing this. And I wonder what kind of weather it was that day. He's, just, he's embellishing this story. And meanwhile, my brother, who's been holding his arms arms up for a long time, you can see he's struggling to keep his arms up, right? And I'm getting mad. I'm going, Kent, just 
land the plane, get to the, the get through the story. And it's only a couple verses. And then something incredible happened, and I will never forget it. My brother's up there, and you can see his arms are shaking. He's struggling, and his arms are starting to go down. And right at that moment, two of his friends, who were also sitting in church near us, they got up. And I don't know if, if the pastor talked to them or whatever. I was blown away. They went up totally on their own, and each one grabbed one of my brother's arms and helped him hold him up. And I, that is so locked in my memory because that's exactly what this story is about. And that's, that's why the pastor brought my brother up and all that. You guys, Moses, what was so incredible about that story, Moses is leading this community, but he needs the community as well. There's no way he's going to be able to keep his arms up and keep leading his people to victory in this battle without people coming alongside him. We need community and community needs us. And that is, is one of the greatest takeaways. And if you hear one thing that I share in, in this little nugget. It, it's that you need community and community needs you. And that is so huge, you guys. I love that. One last picture from scripture that I want to share uh, comes from the New Testament. We're going to go way forward and into Acts. And in Acts, this is the story of the baby church. Remember, Jesus has left and he's kind of said, hey, this is your deal, disciples and apostles. You guys go and figure this out. Become the church. Be the church. Be the community of God's people. And they've got to do this. And this, this little, little uh, snippet comes from Acts 2. And I'm just going to read this section because I think this is so beautiful of what living in community is all about. Okay? So here's what it says it says find my place all the believers were together and had everything in common they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who was in need and every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved and you guys Obviously, I, I tried to emphasize the word together, that we're supposed to be together. We're sharing, we're helping each other out, all that kind of stuff. And the Lord adds daily to that, to that kind of a community. And, and I just want to call out, you guys, you know people. You come in contact with people every day who are dying because they're not connected to community, the community that they were created for. And, and we know people. We know, you guys, that in our world right now, loneliness, depression, and anxiety are, are three of the, the, the worst things that are going on in the midst of all this, this chaos. Those are all symptoms of being not in community. You guys, we were created for community, and when we're not, we get stuck in anxiety. We think we're alone. Um, we're loneliness. We're, we're longing to be known and to know other people. And, and depression, uh, we just don't know how we fit in. We need, the community is what keeps us rooted in that. It reminds us who we are, who God is, where we're going. And again, we were created for that. So you guys, um, I just, just want to encourage you uh, as, as our world is, is more and more disengaging and we're, tr we're turning to online community. What is online community? I mean, you guys know what an oxymoron is? It's like, like the word jumbo shrimp, two, two words that, that contradict each other. Is it, is it big, is it jumbo, or is it a shrimp? Um, liquid gas, how can a gas be liquid? Um, you know, there, there's things like that, military intelligence. Microsoft works. Okay, I, I digress. But, but it just it doesn't seem to make sense. Online community, we can't rely on just our devices and being online for community. We need to be known and we need to know others. And again, you guys, I want you to hear this and I want you to remember this. Uh, you need community and community needs you. So consider that as you, you dig into some of these questions and as we enter into that this month, um, talking about community and seeing what scripture has to say. Thanks for listening. Let me pray for us and we'll head out. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are an in-your-face God who made us to be um, living face-to-face -face and in relationship. Um, help us to dig into that together and, and really to, to seek to, to choose to be together and to do life together. Lord, and to even dig into what, what it means to do life with you, to invite you into every part of our life uh, as we figure out, Lord, just who we are, who you've made us to be. We love you and we give you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.